Hey everyone, Tyrone Nakwadase here, talking Taika with Tyrone, and uh, we are doing a special collaboration with the Taiko Community Alliance, aka the TCA, uh, where we are talking with the new recently hired staff for the Taiko Community Alliance. So this episode here is featuring uh, someone that has been working a lot with TCA in the past. And so we're going to find out a little bit more about uh, what her current role is going to be and uh, kind of how that differs from what she's doing. So I hope everyone uh, enjoys our episode here with Sarah Gilbert. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Exciting. All right. So before we kind of break into the nuts and bolts, let's learn a little bit more about you and your Taiko history. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, kind of when you uh, first started experiencing Taiko? Um, so I first found Taiko. Um, I was a pretty late bloomer to Taiko. I didn't actually discover it or know much about it until back in 2013 um, when I graduated college. Uh, my, my undergrad was in percussion. So I did a music ed degree with percussion performance degree. Oh, okay. Um, but then when I went to get my master's, I pivoted a little bit to have a um, more job opportunities. So I got my master's in um, teaching English to new, uh, as a new language. Um, oh. And so I didn't do music as much or have that opportunity in grad school. So I started looking for opportunities to keep doing that. And that's when I came across um, Stony Brook's Taiko group, Taiko Tides. Okay. Um, and I, before I even got accepted at the school, I kind of emailed the advisor and was like, is this a thing I can join? I'll be old, but I really want to do it. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just come by. Like, even nice. if you don't get in, you live nearby, just come check it out. It's like, great. Um, so like day, I think before I even started classes, when I ended up going to grad school there, I started going to, to Taiko Tides practices, um, mm. figuring that out. Um, and everything kind of grew from there. I see. But had you seen Taiko before kind of just reaching out? No, not really. Um, oh. I, I'd seen some like online. Um, mm -hmm. my, my senior year in college when I was working on my um, recital, I'd started doing some pieces. Um, my main instrument was marimba. Mm. So it was very far away from um, like the drum aspect of taiko but i started doing pieces by keiko abe and so then i started looking into more japanese style music and learning more about taiko in and of itself oh, okay. but uh where i went to school we we're like way upstate and now ironically they actually have their own taiko group too i went to potsdam for undergrad mm -hmm. uh, where sean shibata went and oh, he okay. their taiko group but not until a year after i'd left oh, so, okay. <laughs> so we didn't we kind of missed each other there and so i i'd never really had access to it before i see I see. So, uh, so you played there at, uh, so what, so two or three years, two years for your during your uh, graduate time? Then? About a year, a year and change. Year and so change. I, okay. I finished my degree kind of quickly to try and move on. But, yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah. And had, had that group been pretty well established at that point when you joined? Yeah, they'd been around, um, for a long time. I'm actually, the, the start date has escaping me, but over 10 or 15 years before I'd even got to know oh, okay. by Joan Miyazaki. Um, yeah, so they, they, luckily the group had really great roots. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so then you went and uh, gra you graduate, uh, and then you, is that when you kind of joined Sodaiko? Yeah, um, so I, then once I knew about Taiko, I finally started like, oh, is there more of this in New York City? And sure yeah. enough, oh, there's this group that's been around for almost 40 years. Whoops. Um, yeah. So, so Daiko, um, Cherry Blossom Time, they do a lot of performances. So uh, myself and a couple other um, folks from Taiko Tides um, went to see them at Brooklyn Botanic Gardens. Oh, okay. In 2013. Um, and so that was my first time seeing Taiko at that scale. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I realized since I'd be graduating and moving on from Taiko Tides that that was what I wanted to pursue next was joining a group outside of college. Okay. I see. I see. And so so, that group. <laughs> so uh, you kind of joined up with uh, So Daiko, but that you also told me that you um, kind of uh, took a break in there in the middle to kind of go to Japan. Mm -hmm. You did some Taiko in Japan too. Yeah, it was funny. So I made it um, Mac Evans, Akira Barua and I were my trainee class. And so the three of us got all the way through the trainee program and the probationary program. So Daiko does, and so then we finished and I said, thank you. And I left kind of to go to Japan. So I got into jet program and I just lined up that like the week after the trainee and probationary program ended, I had to move to Japan to start jet program. Mm -hmm. um, but I intended to not stay there forever and come back. And I wanted to, to stay 
um, engaged for Soraiko and hopefully try that again. So I found um, a couple Taiko groups in Japan. Oh, That's okay. the beautiful thing, right, is they have a lot of, um, they have professional groups, but then they have a lot of community groups. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and so there were two or three different groups that um, I played with while I was there, one in Tawada City in Aomori Prefecture, mm. um, and one in um, Taneishi, which is in Iwate Prefecture. Um, both of them were kind of these like festival groups where they play a lot during the year, but their primary goal is to play taiko during um, during all the different matsuri that happen each year. Okay. Which is super fun and a different experience than you kind of get in the U.S. Mm -hmm. that festival life. So um, I guess what was one of the biggest takeaways that you, you got um, from playing in Japan versus kind of playing in the U.S.? Um, I guess the the groups that I played with in particular were super casual mm. um, and one of them actually was in part a student club so they were oh. um, students from the local high school that was there it was a split of community members and student members mm -hmm. so that one in particular had its own kind of feeder program um, but <laughs> I'm remembering um, some jokes that are made here about, about groups, like in the way that we care for our drums. Oh. Um, and they were kind of funny in that way, too, if they were like, roll their drums around on the ground outside oh. or just like, <laughs> and yeah. it was fine because they all knew how to fix them and how, like they had a little bit easier access to replace them. Uh -huh. um, but sometimes groups here we're so serious because we know right it's expensive and we don't have access and we're very privileged to have access here but there mm -hmm. they were so chill <laughs> it was a little it was a little like i was almost too serious oh, okay. <laughs> when i was in japan they were like chill it's fine <laughs> yeah. oh man that's funny that's good Oh man. So so now um so you're currently playing with Sodaiko. So you yeah. come back to the US, you rejoined up with uh mm -hmm. Sodaiko. Um and uh you guys just recently had a big anniversary concert. Yeah, last June we had our 40th anniversary concert. Um so Sodaiko was the first group on the East Coast. So it was also great in that it was celebrating 40 years of Taiko here on yeah. the East Coast in general too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So kind of what was that like? Because I know you had a lot of like uh, uh, kind of past members, historic members mm -hmm. kind of coming back and also uh, participating in the in the concert. Yeah, um, well, Alan has always said um, starting um, for me, the first time I saw him was in 2017, giving his Taiko history speech and talking about this concept of Okage Sama Day. Mm. Um, and all of us were so inspired by that and we really realized that our group exists because of the people who came before us and, and yeah. Sodaiko has always had this long um, lineage of respect for the members who came before us and recognition that they built our taiko they secured our space they mm -hmm. you know we couldn't exist without them yeah. um, so right from the beginning we kind of tapped into that idea of okage sama day and mm. um, recognizing the members who came before us many of whom still live locally and they come to mochitsuki every year um, so we kept that in mind, uh, and especially because now we are kind of a small group, and um, mm. the majority of our group actually started um, within probably the last five years now. Oh, so really? It's extra important to us to really incorporate that lineage so that mm -hmm. it's an opportunity for us, too, to really learn and, and get the full weight of what that 40 years means. Mm -hmm. That's started Taiko or just started with Sodaiko in the last With Sodaiko. Oh, okay, Sodaiko. I see. A lot I of see. us had collegiate experience and whatnot. So there's, there's a pretty healthy mix of newer and really experienced players oh interesting interesting i did not know that so yeah. how, how many members do you kind of have kind of in your in your current like uh performing troupe uh we have nine active uh, members okay right now. all right that's like that's a good size that's a yeah. good size yeah yeah i think uh, in past years it had been closer to maybe 15 or 16. oh uh, okay um, the size of our peaches like hachidan in particular oh we're right. all in basically every need a lot of people yeah we do yeah so <laughs> we've all gotten really really strong but I was really tired. You're so funny. You're like, yeah, we're kind of small. We're only nine now. It's like, oh my god. I, I think we're my group is at like ten or eleven, and I'm like, oh my god, we're so big, you know? Because we started as three, so, so we're used to kind of playing more that ensemble style, and now we have more people than we know what to do with. So, yeah. uh, it's kind of all perspective, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, let's talk a little bit why we're really here. Um, talk about this uh, operations manager job that you're going to be, uh, well, I guess you've already started doing uh, with TCA. So, um, yeah, today, today actually is day one of my oh, really? oh, okay. operations manager duties. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, 
congratulations on your first day of work. You're going to tell us about all the things that uh, this job entails and you just started. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, just what is it that the operations manager is going to be doing for the uh, Thai Community Alliance? Um, so, so operations manager, I, I think is, is pretty much how it sounds, make sure everything's operating. Um, so our community has a lot of incredible ideas um, and vision, you know, this is the year of vision 2020. Um, and so how do we make those ideas happen and what are all the things that we need and how can we make sure that we have everything needed so that everyone can keep going and none of those visions get stalled out. Um, so I think that's, that's the primary part of what I'll be doing on our team. Okay. And uh, I guess, uh, uh, what are some of the different uh, experiences that you had that uh, kind of drove you to kind of um, apply for this position? Uh, kind of what, what's your background related to some of the work that you'll be doing? Um, well, I'm definitely the, the techie of the team. So I've been pushing all of the buttons. Um, Elise has a great saying that the tech committee um, makes, the, makes, makes the digital real. And so that's, that's kind of been um, my component in TCA for the past couple of years as well. Um, so up until now, I've been working kind of as the Salesforce administrator and um, tech consultant for TCA and more recently kind of working with programs as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically anything that we have that's a digital component, I've been working with our, our tech team um, and also communication. So any of the social media and, and that kind of stuff, how we put our face out into the world. Mm -hmm. That's been myself along with our really hardworking committees and our, our tech committee in particular is, is a pretty amazing set of people with skills. I see. Yeah, and that's actually kind of what I was going to lead into next about uh, uh, what you're doing now, I guess. Is there that much difference of the, in regards to your role, what you're going to be doing now versus uh, what you were doing kind of as a member of these committees? Uh, no, it's, it's pretty similar, except now we have two more awesome staff members who are taking some other work off of me. Um, that oh. we didn't have people kind of filling um, those responsibilities up mm -hmm. until now so that we can really be a good team of three in executing these things instead of a good scramble of, of people all over the place trying to bring the pieces together. Yeah. And that actually kind of brings it to a question, and I'm not sure if you know the answer to put you on the spot here, but uh, I guess how, how does this uh, kind of, now that you guys are kind of working, and it sounds like you're taking a little bit of the responsibilities off of some of these committees, is that kind of how it's going to work, or uh, the committees are going to kind of continue to exist, to, but they're going to be supporting more uh, direction from the, um, the staff now? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't know if we totally know either, um, but at the same time, our committees, TCA's committees are full of amazing people who've done a lot of work, have a lot of institutional knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of the staff responsibility will be um, filling in the gaps and supporting however we can, but also continuing to utilize and work with um, committee members who are willing to stay on with us as much as possible, because kind of the more voices and vision that we can get infiltrated into the projects, the better. Mm -hmm. And uh, if someone's interested in kind of learning more information about the committees, or are they uh, open, or do you have to apply, or how does one kind of get involved if they if they uh, find that they, you know, have an interest in one of these areas that the committees kind of uh, serve? Mm -hmm. um, we're definitely kind of getting the lay of the land right now as far as what committees need, what people with what kind of skills, and what we're mm -hmm. looking to onboard. Um, at any point, if somebody's interested, they can always email TCA um, at info at tycocommunityalliance.org would probably be the best place to, to get the word in there if somebody's interested in volunteering. Otherwise, um, we've, we've done some things at events. I know that there won't kind of maybe be events for a little while, but if there are digital events or other things, keeping in mind reaching out to board members, um, any of those ways of access, it all has a way of kind of getting back to the appropriate people. Mm -hmm. um, so just reaching out to anybody that you see involved with TCA and starting the conversation is a great way to start working with the org. Awesome. Yeah, I just know that, uh, that there's probably a lot of people out there that are just kind of, uh, they want to get involved, but they're not exactly sure how <laughs> or kind of um, uh, uh, what committees even exist. But I think they're, they're on the TCA webpage though, right? If you kind of drops down, tells about each one of the committees. Yep. Yeah, we're reworking it a little bit now as we kind of reassess what we have and, and what we'll have moving forward. But but yeah, basically start the conversation with anybody. And awesome. Yeah. I, was like, I just want to make sure that you guys are all, you have all the people that you need to be able to kind of execute on all the wonderful programs that you guys are working on. Uh, just because sometimes I, I, I've looked at that list. It's like, man, it's like the same people on every single committee. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know, maybe these guys need some help. Um, and, and then I didn't volunteer. So. <laughs> 
That's fair. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying I'm to get sure. other people. At some point, at some point if you, uh, too, now that we kind of have the staff to assist, uh, um, to assess rather, um, mm -hmm. and kind of figure out what all of those gaps are, I'm sure at some point in the future, I just have no idea when yet, sure. we'll, we'll probably put out a more explicit call too, to say, hey, we're looking for people maybe with these skills to round out our teams. Awesome. Okay. Um, so keep an eye out for that someday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, sounds good. Hey, uh, one last question before we go here. Sure. Uh, I wanted to ask for your take on uh, what's the one thing or just one thing maybe that, uh, you know, your hopes and dreams, was it that you hopeless that uh, you can kind of accomplish in this new role, uh, maybe over, I guess, like the first year? Mm. Um, I, for me personally, um, I'm always like a user experience kind of person. So, um, the past year, it's, it's been great working like on the registration system and all those things and trying to make it easy for the people who are working with our programs. So I think my, my big goal this year is um, to, to try and see how can we expand our user experience to everybody. So that's who volunteers for oh. TCA, who works for TCA, partners of TCA, like all of these people. Um, I'm hopeful that the programs that we do can reach everybody, including those who are, who are involved. Um, and then expanding to reach anybody that we haven't so far. So who, who are all those different communities of people both in the org and out of the org? Yeah. Um, and how can we make everything accessible and meeting the needs that they have right now? So mm. it's a lot, it's kind of a broad vision, but um, it's kind of the, the how can I help mentality. Right, yeah, yeah, no, I think that's cool. So, all right, well, you survived. Welcome. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Your first day on the job is almost over, well, to a certain degree, but uh, we'll in see. any case, it's, it's East Coast time. Oh, so that's right. Sex is kind of just starting. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. Oh man. Um. <laughs> but anyways, hey, I wanted to thank you for coming on to kind of give your little introduction about uh, a little bit about who you are, and uh, hopefully we can get you back on for a full episode of Talking Taiko Tyrone after you got your feet wet with the job a little bit, not the day one. Um. So you can kind of give us a little update. Maybe we could dive a little bit deeper into history because uh, you know my show. We we go a little bit deeper, but they. They cut me off because we want to just kind of make these like uh, a manual little snippets for everybody. Um, so is, is that cool? Can we have you back on sometime on the on the full show? Yeah, yeah. If I ever have experience like everybody else in this community <laughs> who's just blows my mind, I'd be well, happy to. Oh, and hey, and thanks for being a guest on Talking Taiko with Tyrone Presents Game Night. Uh, I believe uh, we're working on doing some edits on your episode, so uh, maybe by the time this airs, uh, that episode will be kind of out for consumption. I know that it's being edited right now, so hopefully uh, you guys will be able to see that soon. So uh, if you want to learn more about the Tyco Community Alliance, uh, just go to, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, it's tycocommunityalliance.org. Perfect. And um, that way you can find out anyway to contact the TCA about all the wonderful programs they're running right now. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're more interested in uh, learning more about Talking Tyco with Tyrone, check us out on our Facebook page uh, where we kind of give updates on new shows. Um, Sarah's also awesome in always uh, putting our show updates on uh, uh, Tyco Community Calendar. So thank you very much for your support there. Thanks for um, submitting. But also just, um, you know, search for us there on Facebook. Uh, we're going to be starting to upload a lot more videos on YouTube, including our new game show, Talking Tech with Tyrone Presents Game Night. Um, so just search us there. Um, our podcast actually is playing on uh, SoundCloud, where you can get all of the uh, current and past episodes. And we're on Spotify. All the new episodes are on there, and we're slowly kind of uh, updating with uh, archiving those old episodes. And so you, if you didn't listen to them before, you can listen to them soon on Spotify. But definitely all the new upcoming episodes that get released uh, get released on uh, Spotify and SoundCloud. So hope you check us out there. And uh, before we go, anything else you want to say? No, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm looking forward to this year. It's going to be a different one, but we have a lot, I think, that we can do as a team. So it's going to be interesting. Awesome. All right. See you next time. Thanks, Aaron. See ya. <laughs>